What is going on everybody? I am back today to talk about a film that was released a few weeks ago and that has been at the height of some pretty intense controversy and it's controversy that I addressed in a full video. If you haven't had the chance to watch it yet, uh, I'll put a little thing up here that you can go back and watch that. But the entire discussion is centered around artificial intelligence in film and the use of artificial intelligence in movies. And there was a big thing because there's some artificial intelligence still images used in this film film that a lot of people were boycotting the movie and to put it very simply so you don't have to hear my whole 10 minute spiel I am not a fan of artificial intelligence in film I 100% believe that film should be made by human beings that it should be a hands-on process and it seems like from the statement of this director that they were experimenting with the technology a couple years ago when the film was being shot before it was at the center of attention and that they thought about it and that obviously with the heightened discourse surrounding it they might have rethought things in the moment. I think it's important that people feel a lot of passion for these things. And I just wanted to talk about that a little bit before I get into the review. I have an AMC Stubbs membership. So I went to AMC as one of my movies to go watch this film. It's coming to Shudder later on, which I was planning on watching it on Shudder regardless, because I really like David Dasmalchin and I like Shudder and I feel like they do a really great job giving indie filmmakers the platform to get their content out there where they otherwise might not be able to. And when this movie was released, I heard a lot of really incredible things about it. I heard a lot of praise around festival circuits. Even directors like Mike Flanagan really praised this when it was initially released, which Mike is one of my favorite directors. So I was really excited to watch this movie, and the film I'm going to be discussing with you today is Late Night with the Devil. Late Night with the Devil is directed by Cameron Cairns and Colin Cairns. A live broadcast of a late night talk show in 1977 goes horribly wrong, unleashing evil into the nation's living room. So, as I said, despite the controversy, when this film was first announced, I was really looking forward to seeing it because I love David Dasmalchen as an actor, and I thought the premise sounded really interesting. And unfortunately, I think this movie is incredibly overhyped, and I'm not 100% sure what so many people are seeing in it, and that really disappoints me. And I'm not by any means saying that this film is terrible. It's very watchable. There are a lot of incredibly enjoyable moments. But as I was watching this film, for starters, I felt like it felt like the concept for a short film or like something that would be in an anthology horror film but stretched way too thin. And it also felt like it borrowed from a bunch of other movies that already exist that have done these types of things much, much better. And I'm going to talk about it in detail when I break the movie down for you. So at the beginning of the film, we get the breakdown of this TV talk show hosted by Jack Delroy, played by David Dasmouch. And we get a little bit of a backstory into his life. It's the 1970s. He is fighting neck and neck with Johnny Carson for late night television. And his show constantly fails over and over again. Like it has its viewership, but it never gets to the height and popularity of Johnny Carson. And we get told about his wife, who was a stage performer who tragically passed away to cancer and how that impacted him and his pursuit of being at the top of this late night television show and the entire film centers on one night of the talk show on Halloween night where he Jack gets an idea for the show that he believes will change the entire talk show and bring in new viewership and take this program to the height of its popularity and we just get to see different guests on the show and how the night progresses while cutting into footage of them talking in the background and different things things of that nature. So as I said, this film disappointed me a lot, but I will start by saying some of the positives. For starters, I think David Dasmalchen is a star. I love him so much. I think he has a great personality. I think he's a wonderful human being who constantly pushes himself to the best of his ability to be the best actor that he can. And it's crazy to see the types of directors that he has worked with and the projects that he's been on and just how much he brings to films that I don't even necessarily like all that much. I wasn't a huge fan of Last Voyage of the Demeter and I wasn't a huge fan of The Boogeyman last year, but he was incredible in both films and he provided moments that I really enjoyed. And in this film, it's no exception. He is charismatic, he's hilarious, 
He has great dramatic moments. And anytime he is on screen, I was captivated. I think he's an amazing actor. And I'm really excited to see his career progress throughout the years. He just seems like a truly wonderful human being. And I'm so glad that he consistently works on really great projects and works with directors that he thinks have the potential to make something really great. I like the aesthetic of this movie. I love throwback films. I like that it, it's trying to feel like it's this late night talk show and the structure of kind of playing it out in real time was interesting. The film has a lot of great practical effects. Whenever the film went practical, I appreciated it a lot. It's goopy, it's grimy, it's gross. And that's the type of thing that I love in a horror movie. I love practical effects. John Carpenter's The Thing is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And I love the practical effects in that movie. I love when you kind of have restrictions because of your budget or because of technological advancements like John Carpenter at the time. And in this, obviously, there's budgetary restrictions. So going practical and doing things like that that are so much fun to watch is something I can really appreciate. And past that, I don't have a whole lot of positives to stay. For starters, I think the pacing of this movie is horrible. The introduction was really interesting and I liked how it started off and I thought it was really captivating and really interesting. Then it got into the question of the paranormal and introducing a character whose entire motivation is questioning whether the paranormal exists. And the film just got repetitive to where I felt like every sequence over and over again was the same conversation of, I'm gonna prove you wrong, no you're not. I'm gonna prove you wrong, no you're not. And having the same cyclical conversation without any real tension building. I never felt like there was, there were moments that were kind of creepy or unsettling, but instead of like having something to hold on to, to build until the climax, I never felt any real tension or suspense throughout the entire runtime of the film. And I think with something like this, you could add moments in that will kind of increase that level of tension and keep you as a viewer completely engrossed in the material. But instead it it's just like patchy scenes thrown together, which kind of put me in and pulled me out at the same time. And that got incredibly frustrating after a while. One of the things they say at the beginning of the movie is that it's going to be the talk show mixed in with backstage footage that was uncovered and, and shown to audiences. But the problem is this thing was shot in the 70s, right? There are shot reverse shot of every single scene of people talking backstage where there aren't a ton of cameras, hauling those types of cameras and holding that type of equipment and backstage to have that many people shooting from that many angles makes no logical sense to me. I don't even see how that would be achievable in that time period. And that really took me out of it. It's like, oh, they found all of these tapes and cut and edited them together. And for some reason, these people are capturing super intimate conversations about how the show is going. I don't feel like that's how backstage footage would really play out. And so you really have to suspend your disbelief where if you were making this in a different style, showcase the show in its real time and then just cut to like 16 by 9 and have the backstage stuff play out rather than try to frame it as it was found backstage footage because it doesn't make any sense. Having those shot reverse shot cutaways, no one would film backstage footage like that. It would just be someone carrying one camera and walking around. So that was incredibly distracting. The CGI in this movie is abysmal. There's like this scene where this guy is vomiting this goop. There's a lot of CGI towards the tail end and it looks bad. You can really tell where the budgetary restrictions came in and these guys used AI to make images instead of paying artists and they couldn't even get their CGI to look anything good and I really feel like the budget in this was not planned out very well because the CGI stuff looked terrible but all the practical stuff looked really great and I think you might as well have just gone practical for the entire movie because it would have looked 20 times better obviously if you've seen the trailer for this movie the whole thing is this little girl is possessed by a demon and you get so many of the same cliches that exist in possession movies. The problem is all of the actors involved in those scenes outside of David Dasmalchen and the guy who believes that all of these things are like conspiracies and made up, the actors in this aren't very good, unfortunately. And their performances feel like people reading off of a piece of paper. And it's really hard to stay invested when the young girl who's playing the possessed character is delivering the flattest dialogue. And even when they do like the 
the voiceover machine to make her sound like she's a demon. There's nothing menacing about it. When I think of like possession movies, I always think of Linda Blair and The Exorcist and like her possession over time gets worse and worse and her face deteriorates and it gets really nasty. And in this, it's like they put color contacts in and have her have one cut on her cheek. And honestly, like, there's nothing menacing or scary about that. And in her line delivery, it's not scary or unsettling. It's just like, okay, I've seen this in a million movies before. What are you doing to make this new or fresh or exciting? And there's this whole plot arc that's thrown in, which is the crux of the third act twist of the movie that feels so rushed and just like it's trying to get a visceral reaction out of the audience so that you'll feel something towards the movie. So much of the first 45, 50 minutes of this is padded, recycled things go happening over and over again that have really lame comedic beats that don't necessarily work. Even in the 70s kind of schlock way, I didn't find it charming or entertaining in any way, shape, or form. And so you have all of those moments and then you get to like, well, we've really got to make this thing unhinged in the last 10 or 15 minutes and I don't know I just didn't feel like any of it was earned like the entire movie I'm like okay this is a real slog you haven't really built any tension or anxiety or suspense so now you're just going to expect me to be like wow I'm really shocked that you kind of did a bunch of crazy stuff in the last 10 minutes of the movie and I was just completely underwhelmed by this thing I think there are enjoyable moments there's some charming moments throughout like I said I think David Dasmalchen's performance is phenomenal despite me thinking the movie doesn't really work all that much and I don't know I think about like the VHS films or any of these anthology horror movies that have segments like this that are far superior to this movie and even like the film Ghost Watch that a lot of people are referencing there are a ton of movies that have been throwback to these like made for TV specials that are miles above this movie and I honestly wouldn't recommend this film I didn't find it all that entertaining and I was disappointed in it so have you seen Late Night with the Devil did you love it did you hate it leave me a comment down below let me know what you thought I thought this movie was incredibly underwhelming and I was really disappointed in it as always if you can like the video and subscribe to the channel helps me out a lot and lets me know the type of content you're looking for I'm always putting out new material and look forward to get more out for you in the near future. And as always, everyone, thank you so much for watching and have a great rest of your day.